Welcome back, everyone, to the Ash Coast. We are reconvening tonight with a very slightly different party, but along the same principle as we make our way through the bowels of the uh, sunken temple, a coquina structure hiding among the still waters inland to the Honors Hold Island. All right. We got some familiar uh, faces today. Uh, we've got, uh, I'll, I'll, no one's eating, so we'll let you guys go in. Uh, we'll start with you, Josh. Who are you playing tonight? I'm playing Ultar Ankor, the fighting man. All right, and we got Hobbs. Hey, I am playing Taganus, man, fighting man of chaos. Going back to the old uh, all fighting man team, as Louis has recovered from his uh, near death experience with the fire beetle, he is now capable of walking, and he has joined the party. He has, and he is joined by a. He does have a uh, a friend with him. I do not have a name. Uh, it's somewhere in the Discord. Yep, and I. That's why I'm on my phone here looking for ah, it. Perfect. <laughs> he has gone and hired a cleric. Uh, partially because he's now afraid of dying. <laughs> but also because the party doesn't really have one. Yep. Yep. Back are. Yep. He has hired a. Uh, yep. The. Yep. The round. The, yep. Gip the round. <laughs> That's what it was. It was. A, uh, a somewhat wizened. Uh, cleric of Sakar, the Lord of the Righteous Dawn, keeper of the library ships in the flotilla, and the, uh, let's see, this one, and uh, the purview, uh, a purview of justice, learning, knowledge, and of course light. Uh, the Gip is a little rotund. That's okay. His face is a little puffy, but he's got a ruddy complexion. He would rather be in the library than on the adventure, but the uh, Sakar calls him to explore. So, uh, without further ado, I will switch over to my dungeon master and screen. And we'll switch over here. And we will activate our screen. It's supposed to be like a we're at a cross junction, correct? Correct. With water to our south. Excellent. Correct. As a uh, re as a brief recap, the party had come in and uh, had gotten a boat and rowed out to the monolith in the center of the lake. Uh, they found a hexagonal temple, uh, which they entered. A thrumming noise filled their ears, but the make you go away. Oops. A thrumming noise had filled their ears, but that's okay because they were able to make it back inside and uh, they jumped down the giant toilet after the Frog King and then they went north following a trail of water, which appears to have been where the frog went. They were ambushed by some shambling undead right here, but dispatched them. and. We are now uh, victorious, although a little bloodied, uh, ready for the next phase of our adventure. And this frog that we're chasing, uh, have we, or has the party, I guess, uh, encountered it in actual combat, or are we just chasing it around, unsure of its uh, intentions? The latter. Okay. I think we weren't really chasing it around. It was the only intel we had in the pool room where we first arrived down into this lower chamber. And so uh, instead of investigating any of the other doors, I don't know if you saw the map I connected, but instead of investigating the other doors there, we just followed it. Okay, perfect. Why don't you give us a description of that uh, frog dude again, so maybe that'll help these guys know what's going on to you. Yep, sure. Yep, the frog... 
The frog was initially encountered in the uh, forward entry room. There was a large whirlpool, and behind it there was a uplifted uh, stage almost with a number of columns rising out of the ground. The, the toad, its skin was warty and coarse, but its back was seven feet across. Um, it looked vapid and kind of distant in its eyes, and its movements were uncoordinated, much like a uh, workaday toad in your garden might be, albeit at a gigantic scale. Okay. The miniature What's a workaday toad in my garden? I don't know <laughs> what that means. There are these things that we have down here in the uh, not frozen north. Uh, they uh, jump around on the ground, eat flies. Why do you call it a working day toad? Because <laughs> they're not the fancy types that they have down uh, down in Spain. Oh my goodness! That's a deep I'll lore be, joke. So I am like, oh, holy <laughs> cow! I got the deep lore joke. I still don't know what the hell you're talking about with a working day toad, though. <laughs> no, no, it's just a regular. I'm just saying it looks like a regular frog that's gigantic. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, deep ten points for anybody who gets the deep lore joke. <laughs> ten experience points. Ten experience points. <laughs> Thank I will you. Coin, yeah, I got that one. <laughs> Down in Spain, you got that. <laughs> oh god, I've um, been hanging around the ADD long enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to the um, let's see, to your left, you see an opening where the shambling undead had come from. Uh, there looks to be a mosaic on the floor. Uh, it's hard to tell from here what's in it. Uh, to the north, the water continues into a hallway, which uh, veers to the right, uh, and then to your to your right, uh, that is heading westward, there are curtains on the walls, north and south, bound by heavy iron chains. Um, I feel like... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. I'm good. I was, well, was going to say, we were exploring the curtains in this room, and that's when the shambling undead came from the western uh, room. So we didn't really go into that room, or did we, to explore that? I don't remember. You did not. So we well, might as well go see if there's any treasure in there, right? Yeah, I'd like to investigate that mosaic, too. Oh, guys, I'm back. Hey. Hey, welcome hey. back to you. All right, where were we? Are we in the complex? Uh, referee, or are we just Correct. hang out? You just finished fighting the shambling undead, and the party was talking about going uh, going to the room the undead came from to check out a tile mosaic that they see on the floor. Okay. Um, just quickly, should I be seeing on the Ash Coast, you know, should I be seeing a map of the dungeon, or is it just a uh, map? You of should the be general seeing life? a map of the dungeon. Let me see if I can. Okay, I might need to refresh, that's all. Oh, okay, yeah. For what it's worth, um, Louis has his spear equipped currently. I didn't know Louis had a spear. I thought he only had a bow. Nope, he has a spear, and I think he has a hand axe that he plans on never having to use, because that means he's far too close to the enemy. Whereas, at least with the spear, I can attack from uh, from a, a slight distance. Yeah. I was mostly just hacking on you. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, yeah, we're, we're in business, I see it. Yeah. Oh, and uh, f coming in tow with our friend Louis is uh, Gip the Round, a fellow priest of uh, of Sakar. So I know you're playing your magic user, Dio, but Sa the yes. Lord of the Righteous Dawn just cannot leave this uh, group alone. So we are. Uh, you have your you have your very own Sakarite to mm. hang out with. Hopefully, he has better luck than I did in the previous <laughs> game. Maybe. Speaking of injured characters, I remember in the last game, I believe Thaddeus, oh, I know he's not here, but his character was kind of injured or wounded or something. How would you <laughs> like to sort of handle that, uh, Taylor? Um, he's For the time being, we'll just fade him into the background. In the event that he's able to join us tonight, he did not ping me saying he wasn't going to make it, but in the event that he can make it, we'll just let him pop in, and if he does not make it, then we won't worry about it. He's, he's okay, watching sure, the no boats problem. right now. Yep, he's watching the boat. How did he okay. get back up to the boat? I'd like to go that way. <laughs> <laughs> follow him, follow him. All right. All right. So let's go in there and check that out. All sure. right. Let's see. Ten. 
twenty. Oh shit. You enter a uh, diamond shaped room. They're the mosaic that you saw depicts fish. Natural, healthy fish. It's the it seems to have been defaced slightly, as though heavy furniture or someone who is clumsy with heavy uh, with uh, bladed equipment might have gone across it. Um, but other than that, it is a standard, uh, a, f a fairly well uh, well laid mosaic. Um, what did the do the walls have anything particular? Walls and ceiling. The ceiling is um, pointed, so it goes up in four places, uh, creating a pyramidal roof in the sh in uh, the shape of the room. However, the walls are unadorned. Uh, referee, I don't expect this will be the case, but does it look as if the you know the tiles that the mosaic is being sort of laid down upon? Do they look like they're being placed into the floor, or is it like directly, um, is the mosaic sort of directly embedded onto the floor itself? Like, is there anything that looks like it could be levered up, like the floor tiles could be levered up? Is there like a slab that could be levered up, or is it not really built like that? You prod it a little bit with your uh, prodding stick, and it appears to mm -hmm. be solid. They are they okay, have been uh, cemented into the floor. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Do we want to spend the time to uh, see if we can push any of the tiles in like a button? Like spend a turn searching for secret doors in here? I don't think that's likely because, I mean, you can definitely do it, but I don't think it's likely because consider that anyone who's just walking through casually might accidentally trigger their, you know, trigger yep. their own mechanism. So I don't think it would put a mechanism on the floor in this sort of context. In, in this area? Yeah, no. Yeah. Good, Does uh, that good kind of thinking. make sense? You get what I mean? Yeah. Are the, uh, is there, like, are they certain types of fish? They are, they like are. Like saltwater fish, marlins, big long oh. noses. Are they, like, you know what I'm saying? Do we recognize the fish? And does that have anything that we know of religious context to us? They appear to be freshwater fish. They are smaller and brightly colored, uh, almost like a koi pond. Uh, but they, uh, let's see, everyone can roll three die six if they so choose and compare it to their intelligence. Oh, well, is it? It's forward slash, isn't it? Yep. Uh, mine is uh, 11 with 14 go. intelligence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, I have what's my I with my intelligence of six, I managed to roll under it. Impressive. Miraculously. <laughs> I matched mine completely yeah. for playing the prices right. Eight. Perfect. Uh, I, I, sm I smashed mine. Uh, I got fourteen intelligence, but I rolled a ten. Nice. So, you guys are fairly well versed in uh, your fishery. Uh, so the. The fish you are seeing are native to warm climates. Uh, they don't have any particular religious significance. However, you have seen nothing of their like on the Honors Hold Island. Uh, you you may have seen them before back in uh, back home in in Cain. Uh, you may have seen them. Uh, they would not have been as far as the northern uh, the northern uh, bushel land barbarian types. They're not really barbarians. They're more. They're just. Uh, they're fighter types, I guess, is the way to put it. Uh, so, but yeah, they're they're warm water fish, freshwater fish, and they're typically they're typically associated with more elegance, and so it's not they're they're imported, uh, so to speak. You have not seen their like on the island since you came. Guys, do you see this section at the the west side of the room here? Like, I'm trying to ping it, but I'm not sure if I can just. I'll move my just, cursor around. Yeah, swing yeah. your cursor around a little. Yeah. Here. I think, I don't know if this is like a dead end, but it doesn't make sense that it should be. So I think there might be like something interesting over here, whether that's like a concealed passage or like a shrine or something. I definitely think we should check out this area on the west side of the room. Looks like it turns to the left, maybe. 
turn south maybe i don't know but yeah yeah. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah, that does look a bit open, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe we should check that. Out. Yeah, I still think even with the what you said earlier about the not likely uh, secret door trigger in the middle, I think we should probably not walk on this thing. So you can go let yeah, the sure. dog out real quick. I'll be right back. Can you can you remind me what the restless dead looked like? Like what were they wearing or something? The restless dead were they they looked like bloated and uh, sunken corpses, like someone who had died in a boating accident and been le and had not been found for a week or two, kind of inflamed a bit, and they so they had the that they had that appearance to them, and they were wearing mostly what appeared to be black denim. Uh, upon closer inspection, it's, it's ratty a little bit, but m the majority of them were wearing black denim uh, robe-like uh, attire and with a large yellow circle on the hood. That's not the dudes from the brown cigarette, right? Correct. It is not. It is not the same pattern as the dudes from the brown ziggurat, brass ziggurat. And these brass. And these guys are wearing uh, denim as opposed to those guys had like leather trenches or something, right? Correct. I don't think there's anything wrong with searching around in this room still, because even okay. if it's if it doesn't even if it doesn't maybe have a button or something, it still doesn't mean there's not a concealed mm -hmm. en entrance. Some down below somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't see anything wrong with, but we let's uh, like put a couple, well, a fighting man to each side, and then the two other two dudes to search the room. I would say, and I'm willing to search if no one else is. I don't care. Maybe you can search. I'll, I'll search the west side, like kind of this sort of quadrant of the room, and maybe we can kind of. It's a big room, so maybe we can break it up amongst ourselves. Yeah, I'll do the southern end. Okay. I'll kind of be around here, referee, if possible. Uh, I do not see your cursor. Uh, where were your? Where were you? Where oh. were you? You are on the north side, south side, east side. Oh, west side. I'm right next to where Hobbs is now. Can you, okay. Can you not see I, my little? I don't thing? see your cursor either. Don't either. Oh, yeah, okay. that's okay. We'll just go verbal. So the important part is that you can see. Uh, is that you can see? So. Yeah. No, I can see. <laughs> All right, so you're going to wander over towards that area. So the folks who are searching uh, inside the room, um, give me a D6 roll. Uh, three for me, and a couple of threes and a two. All right, threes and all right sounds good. All right, so uh, a couple uh, the so uh, Dio and Taganus step over towards this part of the room, and the rest of the group searches around the perimeter. You guys kind of prod a little bit into the. Um, tiles, you prod a little bit around the sides, you examine the seam that goes across the uh, where the walls turn into the arcing ceiling. Um, peeking around this corner, uh, you can see downward, it does appear that the hallway goes south. So, and, uh, and Dio, you had already rolled. And Hobbs, uh, did you give me a d6 also? Or could you give me a d6 now? Yeah, baby. Right, perfect. All right. So the as you peek around, um, Dio, you can see kind of south. The hallway per, uh, continues southwards, um, and there's a door uh, to about about twenty twenty five feet away. 
However, Hobbs, you see something lurking. You think to look up, and you see something lurking. Oh shit! Oh they, shit! Yeah, there are two, there are two spiders, of roughly four feet across, clinging to the ceiling, waiting. Um. Run yes, away. I have a. Can I shoot him with a short bow? Am I too close? Nope. You're welcome to. I think I'm going to make a swift retreat as soon as I see these uh, ferocious looking arachnids. I'm going to make a quick retreat, I think. I'm going to take a couple steps back and set my spear for them charging or jumping down. All right. All right. Louis uh, will park himself right next to him with his spear. Louie, get your bow out! Are you mad? It's it's like a it's a long bow. It just doesn't oh. really make sense in indoors. Okay, I should probably purchase a short bow yeah. one of these days. Yeah. You could you could get away with it in this room because this room is fairly tall. It's like uh, it's like a thirty foot ceiling. But yeah, in in a in a ten foot uh, a ten foot space, it would be a little challenging. Yeah. So. But yeah, he, he'll use the spear. That's what I said. You know, okay. using a bow inside is kind of goofy. Yep. But I will uh, invest one of these days. I have a longbow as well. I use my spear almost all the time, though. So, yep. yep the yeah, so I'll be behind the fighters, you know, safe in the back with my torch. The spider skitters up a little bit. The other remains stationary. It seems aware of your existence, but it it is uh, trying to remain hidden. Yeah, well, we're waiting for uh, Grape Slug. What's your fighter's name again? I'm gonna uh, Ultar. Ultar. Yes, yeah, it's, it's next that. to my name on the thing. Thank you. Does the Down spider there. look like it's trying to avoid our presence because it's afraid of us and it doesn't want us to see it, or um, you know, is it trying to stealthily sneak up on us and kill us? It's hard to read the emotions of a spider. However, it does not appear to be retreating. Okay. Yeah, I want to fire at the one that moved, for sure. Okay. Sounds good. Um, anyone who would like to fire on the spider may do so. The one that's uh, the one that had moved is in the open, so you're f fair game. The one that's kind of in shadow there is uh, probably a l partially obscured, so he would count as in cover. Mm -hmm. All right. Does anyone want? Does anyone else want to shoot at him? I'm equipped with my spear. Okay. Uh, so I think you only had one um, one missile attack. Oh, nice. So the eight, uh, what are you using again? Short bow. Short bow, all right. Uh, that is, and you're within, you're well within short range. And so the the arrow connects, clipping the thing's leg, or one of them, and it skitters sideways and falls to the floor. Um, before making a chittering noise and rushing, uh, rushing towards the party. Uh, so I will bring everybody out onto the stage, and we will con we will start our first engagement of the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, pardon me, referee. Yes, Don't sir? we have that uh, one-eyed halfling with us, who is typically a sling user? You do. You do. Lucky the halfling. Um, we also have Voldemort uh, or whatever. Yep, Voldemort. That's true. Voldemort could have slung as well, I'm supposing. I had forgotten about him. Is that all right if he slings? Yep, go right ahead. So, yeah, sling Voldemort right away. Two die six. A six uh, at short range will hit. Um, the The sling stone smashes the, uh, the, the arrow, knocks it off of the roof, and the sling stone makes contact with its head, splattering it. Nice. Uh, so we needed two attacks in one round. I like it. I was gonna relearn this. Uh, as a more scholarly priest, I'm assuming that Grip the Rotund is hanging back a bit. He is. He's got. Yeah. He's equipped with chainmail, and he's holding a morning star in two hands. Okay. And he's he's standing back a little bit. He's not. Uh, 
he's not afraid, but he's also not comfortable with the he situation. He should be uh, parking next to the, the magic user. And kind of <laughs> hanging, or, hanging towards the back, not yep, getting into is. trouble. And Literally, when I get back to town, the first thing we do is buy a bunch of oil flasks. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Good plan. So the other... Let's see, what will he do? Six. All right, huh. So the watching its uh, the paired uh, parish, this spider skitters south. Nicely done, guys. Uh, can we... <clears throat> do we have only one person out with light? Can... Uh... I'd like to like step in and see if I can step into the hallway and try to fire at it again, or fire at that one. Sure. If the light source can move with me. Yep. You step in. Um, the top of the round. Go ahead. Roll. Um. Hmm. How fast does he move? Uh, go ahead and roll a d6 for me. Oh. Uh, regrettably, you come around the corner, and the uh, spider is nowhere to be seen. All right. Looks like he headed that, east. That thing was moving fast. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, sorry. Wait, yeah, you're right. It does go around the corner there. Um, at this point, I'm going to put my bow. I guess combat's over. I'm going to just make a note of putting my bow away and drawing my uh, mason shield again. I was worried for a sec they were uh, planner spiders. Note to self, planner spiders. <laughs> Bees spiders. Yeah. So guys, that, that would be pretty terrifying at that, first level. Should we bump that door in the west there? Should we try and... I want to get I, a bunch I of treasure. We, no, uh, run. no that before thing... we start filling around with a door, we deal with these spiders. Hell yeah, because it's, it's got to be a dead end there or a way down or something. So let's yeah. move down there. In formation, maybe Louis, keep yep. your spear out, and I, maybe you should keep your bow out too, mate. Unless you want to be in the front and switch with Louis, I, I don't know. I figured that having the bow out, it being a long bow, just wouldn't work indoors. Uh, so I'll hang I'm back gonna... in the second rank with the spear. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, I can be up get that front. Extra attacking. I can be up front or uh, back with the bow. I don't know. We don't have. You can be up front with me with my spear. Yeah, I'll I'd, I'd do that. I'll do. Uh, I'm shielding mace. All right. All right. Sounds good. So heading south or heading east? South and then looking toward to the east. Okay. Ten. Twenty. Thirty feet. Uh, let's keep our eyes on the ceiling as well. Mm-hmm. Ten four. You come up to the door you see, and you pass by to the to your left in that nook over where everybody's token or everybody's fingers are. Um, let's see. There are what were, oh, brain short circuited. <laughs> you come south and uh, up to the door uh, to your left. There is a nook. Uh, shaped almost like a stair stepping pattern there in which you can see some black dead plants piled up to the east in uh, ovaloid uh, ovaloid planter pots um, there's a small votive shrine uh, in the f uh, in the far back mm -hmm. is it immediately identifiable what god this is to or does that require, you know, going and investigating all the rooms? Um, roll, uh, go ahead and roll a d6 for me. Oops. All right. Six. You think you recognize a, f uh, you think you recognize a trinket sitting on the, on the votive that's shaped like a fish. Mm. Interesting. 
like that, a koi fish, maybe. Uh, this one, this one's a little different. And so there are a couple. Uh, there are a couple deities uh, in the of, in the Canish pantheon that it could be. It could be uh, Odakon, who is a nature god of the ocean. Um, it could be one of the uh, chaos entities uh, that, that is associated with the deeps. Uh, Asag comes to mind, one of the, a creature that is said to be so hideous that its presence boils the water and kills the fishes. So it could, it could be a number of different uh, deities, but it do, there are, uh, you do recognize the potential symbology. Three. Just a question regarding the plants in the alcove. Would I recognize, or would anyone here recognize them as being like, be like a notorious, like poisonous plant, like you know, black lotus or something, or some dangerous type of plant? Is that something that any of us would recognize, even if it's something we've only heard of? Mm -hmm. Some plant that's dangerous to the touch, or you know, does something like that to you? You think that they are? Uh, you think that they might have once been flowers? Uh, a flowering bush that has since died and uh, and kind of withered uh, due to lack of water. An irony, considering that the uh, walls themselves are moist with condensation. Louis, wh Louis, why don't you check the door here where we're next to, and let's move our small contingent, like. Uh, Olgar and I will move down south a little bit so we can see further into that alcove shrine to see if we spot the spider. I just don't want something popping out of that room behind us if we can hear yep. something coming yep. or something. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'll um, I'll listen at the door. I think. Okay. Uh, you know, I have my weapons ready, but yeah, I'll, I'll listen at it. Uh, I, I'm not gonna uh, open it yet. Right. I probably don't hear much. You hear nothing. You hear nothing but the sound of your own heartbeat in your ear. Okay, oh, that's oh. good enough for me. I'll um, I'll hang towards the back and face the door in case something does pop out. But I'll keep moving with the party. How tall is the ceiling in this in this hallway in this chamber? This long hallway, this chamber. I guess. Uh, rough, uh, roughly thirteen feet. Roughly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does that mean approximately, or like the ceiling's rough? That means that the uh, the walls are ten feet tall, but the ceiling is ever so slightly pointed. So mm -hmm. at the center of the room, it's thirteen, or it, at the center of the room, it's thirteen, uh, and on the sides, it's ten. So it varies a little bit, but it's generally uh, it's 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 generally in the vicinity of thirteen. In is is the spider too large to hide in in the uh, in the votifs and in, in the vases and the altar area? The the votive stuff and the dead bracken plant is well large enough to conceal the spider. Okay. All right. All right. So we got to kind of figure the spiders in there. You said it's super dry, right? Correct. It's very dry. All right. Does someone want to run up there and put a lit torch? To the to the dry stuff, I can. Well, I'll do that. Hopefully, the uh, the fumes don't start choking us out or anything like that. It's it's D and D, man. We don't we don't <laughs> we don't think about where the smoke from our torches go. That's why the well, I just mean like uh, like burning the plant creates some kind of toxic. Oh yeah, well um, maybe it'll be the opposite. Maybe it'll be you know, at least like magenta. track rock flowers <laughs> or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. some these complexes have uh, elaborate venting. <laughs> Underwater. That just. But uh, yeah, uh, I'll uh, I'll stow my shield and light a torch and yeah. uh, tentatively go over there and start touching stuff with it. I want to be close enough that I can stab with my spear. Okay. The uh, the bracken goes up in flames with uh, alacrity. Um, let's see. That's a good word, Olg. I'm writing that one down. Yeah, so That's I. the one that gets you? Holy cow, he's been all over the place. He's been <laughs> nailing us with his Hygaxian. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the, the plants go up. The uh, smoke wafts into the dungeon ventilation system and goes through the water. Isn't that how a bong works? Oh, no, sorry. But uh, anyway, the, uh, no, the, the plants go up and a chittering 
uh, again, oops, you hear as this creature stumbles out of the uh, of the burning morass uh, itself. Oh yeah, <laughs> slamming that sucker. Yep, itself uh, itself in flames. Let's see, where'd my this one go? I used to have my dice color coded. Here they are. Okay. This is a family show, I thought, so you should refer to it as a water pipe. <laughs> it's artwork, according to Tommy <laughs> Chong. So, yeah. All right, so it skitters out, and it is aflame, um, and it skitters towards you, but loses steam and crumples onto the floor. I hit its corpse anyway. I'll stab it too. Dang it! Those things—that was the big money treasure right there. It was in strange <laughs> dried flowers from some priest's homecoming. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Good work. Did you say there was like the ovaloid, like uh, plant containers? How did you describe them? You said there's some sort of ovaloid container for these plants. Yes, there are. There are ovaloid, so oval-shaped pots roughly six inches deep by uh, two feet across and uh, one foot in width and they they were holding these plants uh, there's not soil per se in the base of it uh, but there was uh, there's some dust dirt uh, and dead uh, dead leaves might have fallen into it prior to the uh, flame ripping through them the, the embers uh, oh sorry go ahead the embers uh, continue to to smolder, while the majority of the flame dies down very rapidly. This might be one of Dio's harebrained ideas, but you know how you see, you see some people, like in movies and stuff, they hide a key under their plant pot, like a spare key. I reckon there's a wild chance that there might be like a key hidden under one of these large plant pots. Excellent thinking. Yeah, I don't mind the uh, I'll smash them. Or, or inside as well. Yeah. Mm. You, you smash them and rupees fall out. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, yeah, are you looking for rupees? You think it's the Zelda game? Taganus, Taganus is, uh, his eyes get a little distance as he ponders what these giant spiders could have been eating. Looks around, does he see like any like uh, dead animals or any small skeletons around in the corners or anything? Not uh, not off the cuff, um, though. Folks who would like to search in this area may roll a die six to do so. I'm gonna have Bodemel do it while I keep watch. I don't want us to be surprised by anything. I guess I'm looking through the wreckage of the, the smashed plant pot. See if there's anything yep. that catches my eye. Let's see. Uh, Dio, roll me a d six. Oh, you already did a three. What? So I thought I did, yeah. Yeah, you did. I just I was looking for the wrong name. <laughs> I see Elias the Elder. That's your character. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So the um, you do not find anything hidden under the potted plants. However, looking into the further recess of the alcove, you find uh, the shrine. The shrine was made of a pumice material, and so the flame did not touch it. Uh, there was some old cloth that appears to have kind of imbr uh, to have uh, cindered, uh, but that's not. Uh, it was the cloth was more damp and doesn't burn. Uh, there is a clay bowl containing forty silver pieces. And then there are three trinkets. One is a uh, one is a fish that appears strangely uh, wrong, uh, like it's something is not apt about it. Its eyes just aren't quite in the right direction. Its fins aren't quite uh, at the right symmetry. Uh, one of them appears to be a snapping turtle. And then uh, one of them appears to be a skull. Silver trinkets that would fit in the palm of your hand. Guys, do you want to take we these? I'm have... a bit hesitant to take from a, a shrine. I don't want to get struck down I, uh... by... <laughs> you know what I mean? Struck down by God. 
Yeah, these seem to be of a chaotic bent, and I have no problem grabbing these. These aren't my god. But hey, that, that weird fish we saw, didn't we see a statue of that on the brass ziggurat? You did. You you found uh, one of the cultists on the brass ziggurat had a pendant of a very similar shape, yes. Do we have a hammer? Like, does anyone in their inventory have a hammer? And do we think if we break off some of this pumice, we can sell it? I have a mace, which should be able to function as that. Because it, it is, you know, an actual functional rock that people can use as an abrasive. Do we think it's worth carrying around and trying to sell back the flotilla? Right. If we take, you know, a, a good you know, bowling ball sized chunk of it. Isn't, isn't volcanic rock pumice like? Uh, I believe, I believe pumice is a volcanic type. Yes, it's a metamor uh, the metamorphic. The one that so there'd be a whole to... bunch of that around here since there's uh, all yeah, these okay. volcanoes. Yeah. I was thinking maybe you wanted the, it to uh, wait scrape, scrape the dead skin off your, your feet or something. Isn't that what you use pumice for? Isn't that you yeah. use like the yeah. little stones? Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what he wants it for, I reckon. I would. Yeah, well, I, it's an abrasive, so I figured, you know, it's like a beauty product. We could sell it to someone. But <laughs> yeah, you're right that there's probably a, a good amount of it in the area, so it won't have the, uh, you know, the supply is there. Therefore, the demand is probably low. Yeah, but I like your thinking because in this area, there's going to be a lot of things that aren't very, you know, prolific and will have more value here than mm -hmm. they wouldn't other places. Do any of these doors have anything different about any of them that would make us make a particular decision about them? Uh, the door to the north that uh, Louis had listened to uh, is silent, uh, according to his listening. Uh, they are all made of the same material. Uh, upon some inspection, they appear unused, uh, so they have not... The, the hinges may be a little more rusty, the handles may be a little more dusty, they don't... Uh, there, there's no sign on the floor that they may have been opening and closing, so these may not have been uh, as frequently traveled, but they are made of the same material as the other doors in the dungeon and a driftwood uh, almost with with a little hint of salt encrusted and uh, wrapped in uh, blue uh, greened copper I believe it was uh, I'm happy quickly, for Josh, oh. I was going to say did you end up taking the trinkets and stuff you grabbed those just double yeah I would, I, I'll grab those perfect just make, just make sure we don't leave them behind you know for these doors, I'm happy starting at the top and just working our way down, I guess, counterclockwise. Yeah. I would think the bottom one is going to lead to a chamber that will then lead to the pool room. Is what I'm guessing. So that makes sense to me. We kind of know maybe what that door is doing. So let's check the other ones first. I think our, I mean, I think our main objective is to get out of here, at least find a way to get out, right? And then secondarily, find some treasure or solve some issues so mm -hmm. let's keep that in mind maybe let's mm. let's go check the top one all right if there's no sign of uh use then i'm gonna assume they're not trapped um not that there's anyone that could set these traps off but it seems that this is this area is largely, um, you know, filled with creatures as opposed to intelligent beings. Uh, so I'm going to assume that they aren't trapped and figure we can just go right ahead without checking. We'll step back. Last way. words. <laughs> yep. The um, you try the door. It is very heavy. Uh, and it seems to maybe swell. It may have swollen uh, in its uh, its All frame. Moisture. Yep. Yeah. So you will have to force it open. Uh, right. One may go, and another may help. Uh, roll a d6, and if someone is helping, you may apply a plus one bonus bonus to the roll. Does it I don't have great strength. Yeah. Or there's before strength before we do that. Does it uh, does it appear to be a push or a pull? It is a pull door. It's a pull. Do you want to try and tie a rope to it so we can stand back and do that? 
Sure. Adius is not coming. Ah, rough. Yeah, we can try and uh, loop a rope around the handle and have, you know, all of us just give it one. Yeah, is that, is that feasible with the type of handle on this door? Um, yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, yeah, we'll, I guess we'll try that so we can be uh, back from the door a little bit. I'll tie my rope around it and uh, I guess we can heave ho. Yep. And because it's rope, you guys could probably have more than one person helping you to pull it open. So The old tug of war. Yep, if you so desire. Yeah, might as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Who's the, the principal puller? I get my rope, my pull. <laughs> All right. No, oh, <laughs> not great. Rope snaps. <laughs> now the uh, you slip a bit uh, and uh, lose your uh, lose your grip, but that's okay. Oh, you know it's in here. Is the trap is still set off? Good work. <laughs> the trap goes off. Rocks fall. Everyone except Thaddeus dies. Everybody dies. All right. So Give on the another, first uh, on the first tug, there is a little bit of um, there is a little bit of give, uh, but you, like I said, you slip, your grip slips, and you fall backwards, and it throws everybody off. The door does not open. We want to try this again, or just do it the normal way. Let's let's give it one more shot before moving on. Yeah. It did right, it did yeah, cool. It did make a little bit of noise, um, just as information, but uh, you could try again if you so desire. I'll let somebody else roll. Louie isn't the strongest, but he'll give it a go just to see what happens. Right. Yeah. That's, a bit, That's right. a bit better. It is with um It was loosened. Yep, with everybody uh, with everybody pulling door pops open. Uh-oh. Three, three figures are visible, uh, shampling towards the door. Um, I'll, I'll step in and take up the, the chuck position at the door. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and folks, uh, folks want to be in the second rank, presumably. Who, who Spears. Are Spears in the second rank. All right. All right, sounds good. So, let's see. And I guess can I just like throw my torch and pull my shield out? Yep. Like throw it on the ground. Yep. Go right. Oh, ahead. you can probably pass your torch off to the cleric or the magic user. Okay, yeah, yeah I'll do that. That way, there's no chance of it going out if you you throw it on the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll do that. I'll pass it to whoever can uh, take it. All right. Sounds like a plan. I will bring uh, everybody the out. Cleric. I'm not the... turn undead. You may turn undead. Oh yeah, that's that's a good point. Once if they're once they're in full view, probably. All right. Yep. I, I will. We have better luck than I did. Yeah. There, and I will bring everybody out. And so we have. Uh, there's, a there's... lot of people. Are you? You guys are going to choke point them, presumably. Yes. Like you're, you're... Okay. So I'm not going to bother bringing them out unless uh, they start making a, making their way out. Um, and so these guys come up and they are sl Ooh. slow on the uptake. Um, the, the spears, the spears may go first. So whomever is armed with a spear may, uh, may roll to attack. Okay. So the first the first one will hit. It will uh, catch in one of its shoulders. It pushes, uh, but it continues to push forward. Um, let's see. Did a three should hit, right? We want low on the two d six. You want high on the two d six. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other way around. Yeah. Um, I guess it's uh, uh, me with the mace next. Uh, the 
by by length the uh, the shambler goes next. Oh. So he Dang. will he will strike at um, the front rank. Um, That's me. A seven mm. and uh, what is your armor? You said you had a a shield at least. It's uh, yeah, mail and shield. All right. He will. This is gonna make great video, Taylor. <laughs> what, with, with me looking up over the top there. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, now we know why my view counts are so dramatically dropping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they're fighting as that. So a seven, uh, a seven is sufficient to hit a mail and shield. He reaches over the shield and tries to claw at you uh, from above. Uh, roll a save versus death. That's a 20. Oh, man. shit. That's These guys 20. do two hits. Oh, no. It just takes one for us. We're level one. No, but they're level two then. Because we're, if we're at the same level, then we need right. two or no? They would normally, yes. However, because they're, zom because they're undead, I'm having them attack as one and defend as two. Wait, I did that wrong. Is it slash R? It's slash R, yep. So yeah, they attack as one, defend as two. Nine. So Big that, oof. Oof. Or wait, no, it's roll under, right? It's or no, it's not. Roll over. It's over. Like, ah. no. Nope, so that will be a fail. You See, we should use missiles first. Probably should, yeah. Now, does uh, did anyone have a? Uh, actually, you would have been. In, now that you mention it, you would have been entitled to use missiles because we don't have anybody though. Because I don't think it would only been like Bodemel might have been able to fire. Yeah, but I feel like it would be we're, difficult for the halfling to get through that many people. Yeah, we're yeah. filling up that doorway. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think okay. that's a choke point. Yeah, make, makes sense to me. So. So yep, that would be a fail. You were looking for a twelve, so, <laughs> so you were. Mm -hmm. That is a slight failure. So roll a d twelve. Oh oh my god! Slash r one d twelve. A five. Uh, you find yourself knocked to the ground, unable to uh, unable to move. Uh, you can still defend yourself, but you have lost uh, you've lost the ability to move. Ever? <laughs> like you got paralyzed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll find Just... out. Hey. Oh boy. If the cleric was turning undead, where would the where would that get resolved? That would have ha that will happen that would have happened first actually so I, I figured the cleric would have waited till he can see like till okay. more of them are in view um, yeah I think sure it's it, is. it is it is based on sight correct uh, okay. yes yeah, I'm just checking when it gets resolved yeah. the, whoever yeah. whoever it's in the magic the it's in the magic phase so that would have happened before melee but so yeah we're waiting to see does he want uh, he has a melee weapon. Does he want to strike at the uh, the zombie? Because you can you can kind of get at him, even even if you're blocking the way, you can kind of V it, uh, so that you kind of at funnel the, it in. The cleric. Yeah, the cleric could strike at them with his morning star if he so desired. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I'm on the ground, that. so just don't step on my beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the cleric will do that. Yep, two d six, rolling high. Two d six. No. Well, not. And, uh, Run away! And, uh, Ultar, you may strike back. So you are you are unable to walk, but you're able to fight. Alright, so I can throw another hit? Yeah, uh, did you already... Did you try one? I th oh, no, you, you hadn't come did up I yet. No, you hadn't... You hadn't no, no, yeah, yet. I hadn't come up and thing. Okay, yep. here we go. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that'll hit. So you will, uh... It grabs your shield and grabs a hold of, uh, grabs a hold of your face, but then you shove your uh, mace up into its gullet, and that one goes down. Prop me up, leave me here. 
you want to drag you back, Griggs, uh, Griggslug, or are you happy where you are? Do you want to drag you back? I can still defend up? myself. No, you, are, you are on the ground, so you're at a somewhat of a disadvantage. What? But what I can't you... stand up. Correct. Uh, you, you cannot stand up, correct. What if we uh, like kind of spread out so our spears are keeping it and then have the cleric kind of in the middle and then Bodomel and the halfling can also fling stones past us. So we're kind of still uh, keep spearheading them in this room so it's more difficult for them to get out, but mm -hmm. we're also using the rest of our people at their best. Is that possible for the next round? Can we shift into those positions somehow? Yeah. With the next round, now that the zombies are, you know, fully in, or the shambles, dead, whatever, wherever they happen to be, um, now that they're closer to the doorway and presumably more in sight, the cleric will probably try to turn them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so to answer, yeah, to answer your question, uh, Hobbs, yes, you could you could set yourself up. The door is a choke point, so you could very easily set your set yourself up to make maximum advantage of it. Uh, in terms of yeah. turning, that would occur on the magic phase. So uh, they would they would move towards you. Missile fire at the half would be would occur, and the and then the turn would go off. If they pull me away, could I uh, fire in a recumbent position? It uh, you have a short bow. Yeah. It would be a challenge, but you could try. All That's, right, so I will. If uh, whoever was trying to pull me back, pull me back. We'll get Louie to pull him back. Um, well, no, Louie, you... Louis nope. farther away from... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, have the w wizard do it. And you can uh, stay with me with your spear. Fair. Stay yeah, with me with the, your the, spear. We'll get the wizard to do it. So, I'm out of we, spells, so... I'm, yeah, I'm we need that attack. Combat medic. Yeah, <laughs> we need that the, attack. Yeah, this is the second time... Uh, this is the second time this uh, adventure that you've done this, Dio. <laughs> oh, we've officially going to be a hero. We've officially figured out the use of the magic user's uh, excess encumbrance coinage compared to his fellows. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Okay, next time I'll load up with the oil flask so mm -hmm. we can. Uh, oh, that's the ladder. Mm -hmm. Now, key, uh, cool. So. We have declared our actions, uh, and the, these creatures will attempt to move forward again. I guess uh, real quick, do you, how do you want to rule me getting set up with the bow? Is that going to take a, like a full round, like I'm unable to fire this round, be um, able to fire next round, or you could you could fire you could probably fire this round because okay. I'm assuming that what the magic user would do, he'd pull you back. It's you're you were only like five feet away from the wall, so he could just pull you back and prop you up. All right, yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Drag him by his beard to make sure I carry him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can tie the beard onto a ceiling fixture. That way he's standing. Uh, exactly. That's how you're meant to do it. That's what it's for. It's like dwarves <laughs> are such formidable fighters. They are. So, so first up, we have our pass uh, our pass through fire. So uh, we have two slingers and a bowman, I believe. Um, Odomel, five. I think it's a miss. Uh, correct. Yep. There's one. Well, I'm at a disadvantage, so I don't know if that's going to hit or miss yet. Um, you're at short. Does that mean he rolls twice? <laughs> <laughs> no, at a disadvantage, man, I was going to penalize him. Um, <laughs> but you have a short bow, which is designed for use with um, like horseback. And, and stuff like that, and indoors, so you're able to get the draw. I was imposing a minus two penalty on the roll, um, an eight is still sufficient to hit. And then we Good have deal. our... Uh, lucky. We have Lucky, the halfling. Dio, do you want to roll for him? Certainly. He's hits, right? Yep, roll high. That way we can tell Thaddeus that uh, his hireling saved the day. I like how Thaddeus can't be used, but his hireling can. Good. No, no, nine. There's a nine for you. Yes. Is that lucky shot from Lucky? Yep. The a nine is sufficient to hit. So the first creature goes down. Um, uh, then the turn undead attempt may go off. So uh, roll me a... Yep, perfect. A ten. That is sufficient. 
and so you you effectively turn two die six hit die of creatures. So roll a further two d six. Oh. Yep, that is only six. That is only six. All of the visible ones turn and start run and start to flee the symbol uh, of the morning dawn. Let's wait a round or two to see if any more come into our kill zone. And if not, then let's missile fire the crap out of those guys when they're hiding in the back of the wall, maybe. What do you think, guys? Like it? Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I definitely think, like, yeah, holding holding this position in case anyone comes up from beneath that corner there while these guys uh, screw off. Yeah, we should have done that originally, I feel like. Bad tactics might have lamed Altar. Yep. So these uh, at the t t t at the top of the round, these guys will flee, and they kind of cower up at this corner. And you may make missile attacks against them. Oh yeah. Let's focus fire. All right, we have at least one hit from Altar. Hmm. Bodemel's useless. Yeah, Bodemel missed. And uh, back in my arrows. Yeah. Do you, with do you, um, mm -hmm. with Altar rolling double roll fives. Oh, is oh that yeah, extra hit? nice yeah. doubles. That is an extra hit. So you um. The uh, the you uh, you may narrate as you desire. The uh, you you manage to take one down all by yourself. Uh, the arrow goes clean through its uh, like spinal column at the base of the neck, and the head topples to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then the the uh, the body looks around trying to find it. So <laughs> no, but yeah, it, it topples. Very army of darkness. <laughs> To roll for the halfling uh, referee. Yes, sir. Please do. For right. another nine for me. All right, that is sufficient to hit. Do you have any other characters on the team capable of missile fire this round? Mm -mm. I think that says. I think that says that. Okay. All right. So you're able to connect, but it. Uh, he he's able to connect, but the uh, the creature ignores the blow. The sling, the sling stone, uh, the sling stone concaves one of its ribs, but it uh, slams against the door to the north, uh, to no effect. Um, ne uh, next round, um, the they will continue to cower. Um, are you guys going to continue to shoot at them? Yeah. Um, All right. Do we do we want to advance at this point? Like no other zombies have come up. Sure. Uh, at least that way we can get a full view of the room. Yeah, sure. Then I can finish my map. <laughs> oh shit! So stepping stepping into the space, uh, you are. It is a forty foot by thirty foot room. Uh, doors in uh, four places. Um, So, yep, we will go ahead. They are turned, and they cannot defend themselves. You have them pretty much cornered, so we'll go ahead and just remove them from play. And you guys have managed to take out those uh, shambling undead. Victory. Yeah. The victory music, uh, the copyrighted victory music plays. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. Coming into this room, there is a larger version of the planter that you saw outside. Um, in the center of the room, there is a tile section that is an oval in shape, sunken into the floor, uh, and in it there is potting soil. Um, and then against, 
Then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was on the far wall, sorry. The oval, the oval section of the floor is tile. Uh, it is a white color. And then on the far wall, uh, to directly ahead of you, there is a planter. Uh, so a stone planter that runs the length of the east wall, or the, the west wall. Uh, it's filled with so it's filled with topsoil, but no uh, no no plants this time. It's like a big like trough looking garden bed kind of thing. Yep, exactly. It's come. Okay. Is it like a conservatory or not that much plants? You don't think? Not that much. Uh, it's it's about like I said, it's probably about three feet deep, uh, three feet deep. Uh, and by uh, three feet tall, and it runs most of the length of the wall, but that's the only part of the wall that's uh, conservatory. The rest of the room is open, and there was that tile ring on the ground. It's a whitish, kind of milky color. Yeah. I, was, I was typing. Can you uh, describe the, the ring again? It is an ovaloid shape. Uh, reminiscent of the potting, uh, the potted uh, pots, <laughs> the plant pots you saw. <laughs> um, it's it's an oval shape res resembling the rupee pots that you found outside. However, it is uh, inlaid on the floor in a milky white stone. Mm. So there's like a depression in the center of the room. How big is that? Um, oh, where's my shape drawer? Probably like such. So it's fairly large. Yep. Now the depression, uh, the depression isn't that depressed. Um, it's uh, it's no more than an inch or two, uh, but it is uh, it, visible. Further, uh, recall. Uh, Jeff, your friend Gip the Round, uh, he has the oper he has the faith to call down a miracle from uh, Sakar once per day. Um, and we have a guy that's down, correct? Correct. Um, so if we go and kind of give him a bit of triage, um, has he suffered any ill effects other than just damage? You know, yeah, just, other than like, being bleeding, like, do, does he have any kind of like, is he paralyzed or uh, anything of the sort? Yeah, my legs like not just not working. I can't like get him up under me. You 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 cannot get him up under you. The uh, the cleric, uh, if you ask him, feels that the effect may persist for the next few hours. So you will be all okay. right, but you will have to be carried between now and those few hours. Okay. And uh, how much health do you have? That's not a thing anymore. Yeah, we're he right. is. Uh, we're oh, only, that's right. We're that's right. It's just like hits. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So yeah. What do the miracles do? There is. There's no healing from the cleric. Is what you're saying, basically. There, there is healing from the cleric. Uh, he can call on the power of the righteous dawn to remove the effect. It's oh. a. It's a small injury, and he can he can heal it uh, wholesale. They do that right now, though, or is that outside of his current capabilities? I think he's saying he could, or we can wait for a few hours and we won't have to use it. Yeah, so that's that comes down, you know, do, it, partially to you. You know, how important is it to you and your character that he has full mobility right now, or can you get away with walking, or sorry, being carried? Um, and secondly, is that how we want to use the resource? I think it's a fairly valid use of the resource uh you know mobility is definitely important if we have to get somewhere quickly having to carry someone I, definitely yeah my throws uh, a wrench I altar feels great shame at having to be uh toted by a uh a uh, wizard, wizard. <laughs> this is so if, if that's how we want to you know use the resource I, I think that's fair. I am a man of law too. Which law? I'm not sure yet, but <laughs> there's only one. Well, mm -hmm. there's three gods, but no. <laughs> Align. Do we? Joke. 
I think Taganus is like he's like doesn't care. He can do whatever he wants either way. Not because he doesn't care about your character, Grave Slug, but maybe it's because he doesn't care about your character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's gonna he's gonna poke around in this depressed area with the dirt and maybe move over by the uh the topiaries. Is that even the right word? A topiary That's like a like a big carved bush. Yep. The topiary would require bushes. Unfortunately the bushes appear not to be here. So the item didn't sprout or didn't grow. Yeah. I definitely um, think we should cast a spell with the cleric to get him up. Yeah, let's let's get our uh, our fighter up and moving. Um, I have proved to be very valuable. Yeah, no, a great yeah. archer for sure. <laughs> yeah. And and you're lawful, so the the cleric doesn't feel too bad about. You know, I might need that spell later, though. I'm oh, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the last person he probably wanted to do it on. Yep, the uh, not, I think it's reasonable. Yep, yep. The cleric uh, invokes a uh, invokes a prayer, makes the sign of the of the dawn, and your uh, Jello legs syndrome snaps back into place. You are able to walk. I will. Eric. Uh... Give the cleric a hearty embrace, and you know, uh, he, the the cleric doesn't want payment for this. Of course, that would be wrong. But he does expect you to donate at least some amount of treasure to the church. I have no problem with that. Okay. All right. So, Taganus, I think you were investigating the dirt. So, yeah. Go ahead and roll me a die six. See, viewers, this is the difference between old D&D and new D&D. The core mechanic is a different number of faces. <laughs> but yeah. that, that's it, the only difference. That's the only difference. But yeah. So kind of prodding around in the tile area in the center, you're unable to find much of anything. It's very shallow, and the... It's, it's very shallow, and there's nothing appears to be buried. Um, similar story. If you walk over to the planter box, uh, you prod it a little bit. You can slide um, pointy objects into the dirt. Uh, there does not appear to be anything buried in there either. And it's just uh, kind of old, old soil. It's interesting. Is it like tilled? Or does it look like they were planning to at some point? Put something in here or is there like maybe some detritus of old leaves and stuff that were once here and have died because no one's no no longer keeping up with it or it is it is suspiciously barren uh it is dirt uh it is dirt and dirt only and it's fairly flat as though it's been there a long time undisturbed i would say these guys haven't used their valheim server in quite a long time <laughs> all right do these door do the other two doors have anything that marks them in any way or anything or are they also just uh, uh flotsam wood that's been bloated from the moisture they are driftwood doors you know it occurs to me wouldn't this dirt be pretty valuable on the flotilla that's probably pretty dry but i mean the rest of the place it's a dead forest it's a sandy black desert basically leading up to the bronze ziggurat and we're on a flotilla so like good fertile dirt seems to be kind of rare yeah it's gonna be like some water world mm-hmm. possibly the majority of the sustenance that you have had is either imported or fish there uh, there are fishermen that go offshore into deeper water and have been largely supplying the uh, flotilla and so there's a lot of seafood uh, comparative to how what you may be used to uh, there's not as much uh, grain or fruit uh, that stuff has to be brought in and it comes in on the merchant ships so is that mean that yes this stuff would be valuable or no um uh I mean, we're not really farmers, I'm assuming. Yeah. Maybe taking this was, I don't know. He doesn't seem strong like a bull, but <laughs> well, you're 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 not you're not sure. Um, 
it might be it might uh, if you could if you could prove the concept uh, it might be uh, it's not you're not making a you're not making a cornfield or anything like that but it could be used for a uh, a tomato Those plant herbs. or a lime yeah uh, so it could be or like herbs for reagents for wizard spells or i don't know any of those things that would work too there's uh there's a you've heard rumors of a witch in the harbor so she might be interested oh uh i'll fill a small sack with dirt all right well and, and this is a pretty easy treasure that we can carry dirt around and if we find actual coinage we can just dump this on the ground in favor of whatever we think is more valuable. Mm -hmm. Haganus is now infatuated with the seeking of good dirt. <laughs> but this probably isn't that good if you think about it. It probably doesn't yeah. have like insects living in it. It doesn't have a very good biome or anything. Next we time. need to poop on it. We'll poop on it first. <laughs> Next How time much, on the uh, Edge Coast, C. <laughs> Agriculture <laughs> Simulator. <laughs> How much more like going back to the Adventurer's Guild? Imagine going to like the adventurers guild and it's like, oh guys, what treasure did you bring back? And you just like throw <laughs> this bag of dirt on the table, like What is it? I think it's dark dirt. of the guild. I've got a jar of dirt. Hey, you know yeah, what? I, I think we, we pack up on some dirt. Like I said, it's it's an easy resource for us to dump if we find something better. Yeah, is there a, does anybody got a bead on uh how much a small sack can hold in coin weight? Uh, did I write 400? that down on my sheet? Six rolls of cheese. <laughs> this guy here rolls for like 20 minutes. Beautiful. Well, I'm, I'm reminiscing too much to look up, so we'll go with 200 coin weight for now, and then we'll retcon it, and you can have some more dirt in the event that I'm wrong. Yeah. You guys see That's this? Good. Yep, I see a green dot. This is like the show and this is, a, this is an original D green D8 from a box set from the late 70s. Excellent. Nice. I love it's, it. I did not really roll this that much. It just sat in my huge dice bag for so, that many years, so it's mm -hmm. been rounded off from that. <laughs> this is the blue 12-sider that came in that, that set as well. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Oh, I actually have two of them. I didn't realize it. Look, this one's a little more beat up. <laughs> That one, uh, that one, that barbarian hit more often. Yeah. So to the, you have a door to the north. Uh, the zombies had congregated at uh, when you drove them back. You have a door to the south, uh, leading offwards, and then you have two doors going back. What appear to go into the hallway. Uh, let's check the north door. Always go right. Okay. All right. You would like to check it. You, you check in for traps. Check in for um, if it's open. Check in just, for just listening. Okay. Uh, up to three may. Uh, oops. What am I breaking? Yeah. Up to three may listen. Louis and Altar fight over for listening <laughs> to the door. <laughs> Let me get in there. Okay. Weevil. You hear, uh, you can hear nothing. Okay. That uh, is as good, uh, good enough for nothing. me. Yeah. Yep. You want to try the door? Yeah, sure. All right. It, uh, the hinge comes open, but the door is stayed. There is a lock in place. Mm. Check the other door and see if the lock's in that room. It's hidden in this dirt, guys. I'm positive of it. Let's just keep going through it until we find it. <laughs> yeah, you have a spear. Just start uh, start dredging. <laughs> Two hours later. Yep. You do have we a try thief, and force recall. This door? You have a thief. Oh, yeah. Lucky. I yep. forgot. Lucky the halfling. So, so go ahead and roll... Let's see. The way the uh, the way I'm treating thief skills because they don't exist is we're testing uh, a number of dice pooled against the ability score. But because Lucky has thief dice, he gets to roll additional die 
and take the lower ones in order to have a better chance of going under his ability. So he will attempt to pick the lock if you instruct him to. And he rolls extremely well. Uh, no, he has, he is uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so on 46, he gets a 10. That is below his agility. And so he taps the lock and it comes loose. A hallway dead ends ahead of you. Sounds like there might be some secret doors in there. You are trap, welcome, you are welcome to check. Let's, um, as we walk in, yeah, prod the floor with our spears just to make sure it isn't just a pit. Look at the ceiling and the walls to see if there's like scratch marks on the walls, like some mm -hmm. sort of crushing, crushing ceiling trap or crushing mm -hmm. walls trap. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Oh. You move in and, uh, your tor uh, you see no signs of uh, collapsible walls. You see no spiders or spikes on the ceilings. And uh, you're uh, growing tired, so you feel like you should probably take a rest and relight another torch. I'll, uh, I'll, light, I'll light up. Is this the room we're going to arrest him? Let's, I, why don't we rest in the oval room? I don't, I don't want to be boxed in here. Yeah, I uh, I definitely support that decision. Okay, so mark off a torch. Uh, d I we picked up like forty two coin, or we picked up some coin weight. Forty silver. Yeah, you had the forty silver, and you had the two trinkets, uh, which is you know so you're up to like fifty coin weight, um, and then you have three the, trinkets. I thought. Oh, three. Sorry. So you're up to forty or uh, fifty five coin weight. Uh, that sh Jeez. is that enough Jeez. to put anybody over the encumbrance limit, uh, even with the bag of dirt? Three trinkets. How much are you saying the three trinkets is? Uh, the three trinkets are five coin weight each. Okay, so fifteen. Um, I'm still. I have another two hundred fifty coins before I move to the next. Uh, before I yeah, move up to armor. medium weight. Okay. Cool. All right. So oh, no problem there. This so one. Yeah, book that up. Hold on. Yeah, as armored fifteen fifty, current weight carried fifteen sixty five, so I'm as armored. Okay. Sounds good. And so the party moves at a nine inch clip. So, got it. so the rest uh is uninterrupted and uh if you were had a torch you will want to mark off another one. All right, I'll mark off another one. Cool. And you have this Ooh. mystery hall, uh, and you have the doors to the south. Mm. Let's do um, a quick search for secret doors here. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it needs to be a quick one. Let's search it. Good. Okay. So everyone, henchmen included, may roll a die six. I was looking at my feet. <laughs> well, Hobbs and Louis uh, are on their game, and in the northern wall, you find a loose uh, a loose shell, larger than the others that are wedged as aggregate into the coquina, and you find a secret door in the dead center of the north hall. And let's see, how do I add a door? Oh, I see. So I think that I can delete this. So one of two things is going to happen here. I'm either going to delete show the you the whole wall. grid by accident. <laughs> oh, that's what I wanted. Oh, shit. So this is a real fucking oh. labyrinth dungeon. Double doors. Yep. Yep. To the north, there are some double doors. Um, as you peer through, 
to the north, there are double doors, and then many to the east doors. and west, another two sets. Um, to the looking into this room, you are immediately confronted by blood spray splattered across the floor in the uh, to the left, uh, and a cloak, a black cloak with a yellow uh, a yellow hood. It looks almost like a vehicular accident. So something really bad happened to that uh, whoever was wearing that cloak. I look up. The ceiling is uh, pyramidal, much like the diamond room before. Uh, the walls are 10 feet, and then the ceiling pyramids up uh, a further 10. So it's a 20-foot ceiling, and uh, nothing is in it. I thought that was going to be like a falling, falling trap for sure. Do we know anything that could just like destroy someone so significantly? Um, you have seen, you would have potentially seen uh, a violence like that from large animals. Uh, it's possible, uh, like a, a bear could have done it uh, or a, an equivalent creature. Um, but not a giant toad or spiders. You think a yeah a giant toad, oh, yeah a giant probably, toad probably, probably not. Hole. Is it, you said it's just a. I mean, it's completely mangled. Or... There is there actually is no body. There there is a blood spray all across the wall, on this side. And there is a cloak on the floor. Uh, somewhere in the middle, about where Hobbes' cursor is. And does the cloak look like there's a body in it? It does not. It's flat on the floor. Okay. I'll go uh, kick it around, see if there's anything jingling. Easy. So, the party... uh, Louis, Louis will follow him. So the cautious members he, of the party... He's afraid of yeah. creatures, but he's not, uh, he's not afraid of just, you know, bloody mm -hmm. cloaks. He's not afraid of whatever caused this. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious to find. He doesn't right. think whatever causes his yep. present. All right, taking this will join him. Yep. So, uh, Josh, roll me a d6. You rummage in the uh, in the cloak, and it is a it appears to be almost a torn robe, and inside you find a key. Oh, yeah. What does the key look like? Large wrought iron black? Uh, it is not large wrought iron black. It has... Uh, it is a uh, copper. It is uh, gone green with moisture and age, uh, much like the banding on the doors. And yeah. in the in the head, where you hold it and turn it, there is a symbol of a fish that resembles the trinket that you guys picked up at the votive. Fish head. Hold a bit. Okay. Found us a key. Does the blood splatters look like a... Is there any trail that were made from, like, dragging a uh, corpse through any of these doors? There does not appear to be a trail. Upon further investigation, there's a splatter against the wall. There's uh, a little bit of pooling, uh, but it's n surprisingly dry. There's a lot, uh, it's, it's been there for a couple, it's been there for a couple hours, so uh, it's still sludgy, but it's not, f it's not f free flowing, and there's no sign that a body was dragged off. I'm curious. Let's check the lower right door, the on the east wall. Okay. All right. Would you like to listen, check for traps? How so? What are we doing? The splatters only on the walls. You said there's splatters on the ground as well, right? Yep. Uh, so we... it's over. 
let's see if I have my draw freehand. So this, there's splatter on the wall up here and around here. There's a little bit of pooling right there, and the cloak was like this. It's an insufficient amount of blood to be a... Um, it's an insufficient amount of blood to be the whole of a human body, but there is a significant amount of it as though extreme violence was used to uh, extract it. And it seems magical to me because I don't, it doesn't seem like there's any way for a large beast to have gotten in here in order oh. to like snap them up. No, I'm almost feeling like maybe there's some sort of swinging trap or something that's coming from the east to the west that like smoke this dude over into here. I don't know why, but that's just my initial thought process. Background in uh, reading blood spatters? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me read yours, cleric. Oh, you're not the cleric, sorry. I am a man of law, though. <laughs> and he is wearing ring mail, so you could, I could see how you could get confused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy armor, right. So we this thing at these doors here or are we just gonna kick them open? Let's uh, let's dive right into it, see what happens. Okay. Yeah. As the, the the guy with the cloak was in the middle of the room, so he probably didn't open a door to trigger whatever the heck killed him. Is my logic. Right. We so, are in an unused area, right? So that's kind of our thought process here. So, And this is maybe why it's unused. But only a couple hours ago, which I find really interesting. Yeah, so, yeah I heard you wanted to kick this door in. Yep. All right, yep. that sounds fun. Roll me a door kick and check. The door appears to be stuck. Oh, is it? Wait, does it have a keyhole? Um, it, uh, it does not appear to be locked, no. And there, there's no place to put your key. Well, you could put them probably between the doors, but you don't think that would do anything. I got a place uh, to put my key. <laughs> <laughs> You've already placed it in have my heart. Jagged edges, though. Yep. So this I door think we're going to have to kick it because it's... It's full on anyway. So. Correct. So the door does not appear to be locked, but it is stuck. So. We did show. Yeah. Any so yeah, die sixes. Uh, up to four people may try at a time because it's a big old double door. So. Okay. All right. The twos have it. Uh, so that was that will be sufficient. Um, before you, a uh, octagonal space. To the west, two planters run the corner. So two planters run the corner. Uh, there are stone walls with wood tops inlaid, and three statuaries of uh, n what the Canish call nerta, half men, half fish, of ascending height. These are pots? They're, so they are, they are stone planters, uh, so similar to the ones you saw in the room with the oval dirt, except they are, they are squarish. Uh, and they are ascending in height, so it's like a little stair step effect in the uh, in against the wall. What's that called? That's the Matryoshka dolls, right? Um, sort of. I'm not. I'm. I'm descri I'm realizing that as as I'm talking, that I'm de I'm describing it very poorly. <laughs> it's a it's a stair step style ter terrace. That's what I'm looking for. It's like. It's a set of terraced, uh, potted kind of planters. Um, and on each of them 
there there are five steps going up and down uh, against the wall and the on three of the five steps there are statues of mer people if we um, go and look at the statues do they look like they have any um hinges or parts that can rotate like you can move their hands you can move their arms you can twist their head open their jaw etc um stepping in to look the statues are freestanding so they could be they could be removed if you so desire okay and they're, they're like, they are like they're man sized right. like one to one scale they are They are about a foot tall each. Oh, okay. So they're they're tiny. So they're small. Yeah. Uh, what are they made of? They are made of a uh, gray, uh, a grayish stone. I want like a weird give feeling a that if we move these in a certain them. order, it might trigger something. If you rearrange the order of the statues, gonna trigger what? Maybe like because they're freestanding, like they're not sitting on a pedestal or something that is, um, like connected via some kind of mechanism into the room itself. With it being just you know completely removable, that suggests to me that um, perhaps their order does like th these aren't the trigger for something, unless there's um, little plinths that they stand on that you know it might be triggered by the weight or something. I was thinking more of a magical trigger, like, you know, if we align them in a certain order, it might uh, magically do something. It's kind of, when they said it's freestanding and they're not that big, I was thinking maybe they can be rearranged. Maybe I've been thinking too much of Resident Evil. I think, and I, I think no, you're, you're correct. Hollow. They could be rearranged if you wanted to. Yeah, I was going to say, let's rearrange them into my backpack and see if we can sell them on the flotilla. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm more in line with that. Uh that path yeah. go ahead josh what were you gonna say i was gonna say if, if there's a way to check and see if they were hollow maybe like with the pommel of a dagger or Not something hollow. of that nature yep you tap uh you pick one up kind of turn it over and tap it a little bit they seem solid how much does what does it weigh um, it's about 40 coin weight. So light, but not... So it's it's pretty light. Um, well, yeah. I say we take them. Yeah, They're, absolutely. So I, can, I can carry one. I've yeah. got a... Yeah, I'll take one. Cool. Done. So the three... Each, each who picks one up, roll me a die six. Oh, here we go. There we go. Sneaky. We'd already picked one up, but you didn't have to roll it then. I see how it is. <laughs> yeah. You were right. They are magical. Yeah. So, uh, Ultar, when you pick up yours, underneath it, you notice that... Um, so, they, they, like I said, they were, they were kind of planters. Uh, it's a coquina base with kind of a wooden top where these things were placed and around them there was a thin layer of that same soil you pick them up the first one um uh hobbs you pick it up just kind of a soily top um uh, louis you pick one up kind of a soily top um ultar you pick one up and the earth is disturbed and underneath it there's a uh what appears to be almost a plug like uh you could hook if you you could hook a pair of fingers into it and potentially pull out a false bottom. Um, this is the planter, not the statues. Correct. Yeah, and I will try. I'll fish my. I'll use my dagger to try to pry it up. Mm -hmm. I don't want to stick my digits in there. Yep. You unplug. You're able to unplug the top of the planter, not the statue. Uh, so to answer that question and inside there is a hidden empty chamber or a hidden uh, 
it's getting late. My brain's not pulling out the Gygaxian words anymore. <laughs> There's an opening inside the planter that is filled with coins. Hundred, Jackpot. Boys. Hundreds and hundreds of coins. Jackpot. Basically done. Yeah. yeah, start filling the large sack. Yep. You start fishing it out. And you find two thousand gold pe or one thousand gold pieces and one thousand silver, two thousand coins in total. Oh okay. shit! Here we go. I can hold uh, at least a thousand of them because I'm already at. Uh, it's not gonna kill. I can hold. Well, so, I guess how how much fits in a large sack? How much coin weight for a large sack did we determine? Um, a large a. Uh, the small was uh, two hundred, so the the large will be six hundred. Okay, six hundred coins. Cleric, oh. when you said you know roll one d six for the the statues, I thought something bad was going to happen. And I was about to say my yogurt that I was eating would have saved me because I, I put myself on mute to take a bite of my yogurt, and then I was about <laughs> to say I'd pick one up, and that's why you said roll one d six, so my yogurt would have saved me that if it was a trap. Yep, yeah, it would have saved you. Uh, from all the money. Exactly. <laughs> yep. I have three small sacks, which gives 600 coins worth then. And I can easily carry 600 coin weight. Um, that'll put me at uh, medium weight load. Yeah, I'm going I'm to dump the dirt out of the small sack as well. What? Just Man, kidding. Take the coinage. <laughs> Two hundred. Our are they, dreams are of they, becoming uh, <laughs> flotilla farmers are. <laughs> so um, we Ryan. Dump, dump the coins. Keep the dirt. That's what, I think. Um, what kind are they? Gold coins, silver coins, copper coins. Yes. Thousand gold, a thousand silver. Yeah. Oh, a thousand gold, a thousand silver. I will hold since I uh, I'll hold eight hundred of the gold coins, please. What's left over? Can it fit in my backpack? So, so, I, as well. yeah, I got uh, eight. He's got. I, I will. I will announce the rules, even though it's detrimental to the party. Uh, page fifteen of Men and Magic says that a small sack holds fifty. A large sack or backpack holds three hundred. Point weight or. Hmm. That is. Uh, that's. Thank you. That's different than the one in the uh, that I thought I remembered from the advanced. Huh. Okay, so 300 in the large sack. I believe basic and AD&D up those sizes. Mm. Those sound a little ridiculous, actually. I can only put 30 coins in a large, a small sack, but maybe the sack is like... 50. You know, yeah, that's they, they probably something many. more like, you know, this this bag but, here. But the coins, yeah, the I think, are, yeah. are like this big, though, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're going to coins. That? Are we doing raw or what? Yeah, well, how do you want to do this, Taylor? Um, uh, let's see. So we set. We'll we'll go with uh, we'll go with what we had done originally. I told you guys it was two hundred, so we'll say that you're carrying the large sack instead, um, just to be consistent. Perfect. And then we'll do it correctly next time. So we're saying 600 for a large sack right now? Correct. And 200 for the Six, small? Okay. Yeah, 600 for the large, 200 for the small, and uh, 400 for a backpack. So. I've got stuff in... I've got stuff... Um, well, my, bag. my backpack's nearly empty. Like, right now, all it's carrying is some torches and some What's the wizard got? Wizard ought to have a bunch of bags. <laughs> I've got I've got barely anything. I've just got like my ten foot pole torches that I've gone through, and I've got like a pretty much an empty backpack except for some rations. So yeah, I, I can load up. It's fine. There you Excellent. go. All right, so more sacks is on the shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> this may be a sacks strange a question, roll. but if your backpack is full of coins, where do you put the sacks? Here you uh, oh, ropes like, like, like this. <laughs> ropes, <laughs> ropes around you like a sea bag. <laughs> yeah, you, you tie either end and yeah, wear it around your shoulders. Alright, that I can that's, see. That's yeah. a good That's a good answer. But Then where do you put your longbow? So no one can recognize me. 
the longbow is unstrung and you're using it like a walking stick. Oh. Mm-hmm. What about your my spear? Short, the short bow, the rope is around my neck, so it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now what? I feel like um, we're rich. Now we just got to get out of here. If we go back to that out. first room with the blood splatter, um, the north set of doors might lead out. Yeah, did all the doors look the same? None of them had a key, a keyhole? Uh, you had oh, a wait a second. Mm-hmm. Don't go walk up to the north door. Just run up to the north door yet. But go ahead and fill out your answer, Josh, please. What was the first question? Did the Josh question? Uh, did we notice a keyhole in any of the other the other sets of doors? Uh, peering the door to the uh, left, uh, so that would be west. The door to the west has a keyhole in it. The door to the north does not. I think that makes our next decision pretty easy. Because I agree with Hobbs, we don't want to go to that north door. Without maybe sending Lucky up there to look around. Oh yeah, Bodemel yep. can carry some shit too. Yep, and so can your cleric, and so can your... Yep. Uh, yeah. Safe to assume all the coins are accounted for. Let's go send Lucky right. up to the doors then. And let's do we want to give him the key that we found? I want him to check the floor and maybe move up along the right wall, the eastern wall, because if something swung from there, that's maybe where it would come from, or the ceiling. Did you say this was a pyramidal ceiling, or what yes. was the ceiling like in this? Yep, yeah, pyramidal ceiling. Uh, the yep, uh, pyramidal in the shape of the room coming to a point in the center. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask there if a blade swings out and cuts Lucky the halfling in half, does he become a quarterling after that, or what's the go with that? <laughs> yes. Always answer yes. There you go. <laughs> answer yes. Noted. It's in the book. I'm, I've written that down. <laughs> right. Yep. If it's not how if it's not in the book, it's a house rule now. So. Of course. Noted. Yep. So you wanted to send uh, Lucky up to check for check for traps. Yeah. Okay. I guess while he's doing that, I'll go listen at the uh, west door. Okay. Go right ahead. Roll your D6. Okay. Damn this button. The, my D6 button's hot as hell tonight. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, boy. We had a 16% chance of finding all that gold and silver. You drilled it. I'm sure glad we used the priest to heal you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out to be an investment. Yep. There is uh, no sound on the other side of that door. What about Lucky? Um, Lucky edges his way along the north wall, or the the wall to the north side, edges across to the door, um, listens briefly, um, taps around in front of him, and does not get bisected. All right. It doesn't matter to me which door we got to try him until we can get out of here now. Yeah, I guess I'll see if the key works. On the door on that. Okay. Yep. You place the key into the door. Uh, it does not turn. The key does not unlock the door that you're uh, pointing at. All right. Is it even locked? Can I just try it with? It does appear to be locked. Okay. You try, to, you try the one? handle, it doesn't go through. Do what now? I was thinking, should we force this one and see if it will take us to the outside? Try another no, one. Let's try, let's another try and pick the lock first. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right, we've got the thief, that's right, I remember. Right, he will attempt. And he rolls uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 is under his ability. So he's able to pop the lock. The lock pops, but the door is swollen shut. So you will have to use a strength check to force your way in. Give it. All right. 
Up to four. Uh, right. So, yeah. Let's put the boys on it. Okay. Louis not. Yeah, up help. to four may attempt at a time. Anybody else want to try it? I, I tried. Uh, yep. We'll say... Who's the test character? Oh, that's lucky. Yep. If we want to, you can do the... Uh, the cleric will give you a hand. Let's see if he helps. Or the cleric. Oh, I see a couple twos oh. in there. All right, good. good. I rolled terribly. Cool. The twos are sufficient. Inside, there is a pentagonal space. You see a disc slowly turning on the floor in the pointer. So I'll go ahead. Like so. a big, like lazy Susan kind of thing built into the floor? Yes. It is slowly turning in the floor on its own accord. It is a bluish color, almost like the water outside. And that's uh, that's about it in this room. Wait, is it like a magical circular disc or is it like part of the floor, like a stone rotating piece of the floor, like a, like a Lazy Susan, I think someone called it. That was probably a good way to describe it. Yep. Or it like a giant floating disc, like the spell. It is not a floating disc. It appears to be flush with the floor. Well, I say that it's, it's elevated from the floor in that it is like an inch or two up. So it, you, you could trip over it if you tried hard enough. Uh, but it, it is a physical object, and it is rotating. It is possible that it's magic, but it's impossible to tell without the use of uh, identification. Back magic. Uh, yep. Do we hear what it? This is like an elevator. It's like a grating. It is. It is dead silent. Oh, so that makes me feel like it's got to be magical. But it looks like stone. It looks like a smooth blue stone. Pollution color. Is it rotating the same direction as the whirlpool? the opposite direction as the whirlpool. You had an answer for that, so that's significant. Uh -huh. Exactly. Exactly. I also had answers for how the hairstyles of the dead cultists at the Brass Ziggurat were. Just so just saying. <laughs> but yeah, it, that is true though. It is significant too. <laughs> but it's also significant. Yeah, lots of significance. Yeah. So the the upstairs was going counterclockwise. Uh, this one is going clockwise. So if my uh, token is to be believed, kind of like this, slowly. I feel like we got to step in. If we look at the ceiling above, uh, does it look like there's a slot that this could raise up out of the ground into? It is a, f uh, there is a flat ceiling, um, except in the, the point area where it mm -hmm. goes down, it tapers downwards ever so slightly. So okay. the ceiling near where you are is 10 feet, but at the point uh, in the wall there, it's only eight feet and it tapers from the, uh, it tapers with the other walls where they curve inwards. Okay, but there isn't like a, a hole that this Correct. No pillar hole. or the spinning did. Okay, okay. So if it is some kind of elevator, it would go down then. Or tele like a portal or something. Or it could be yeah, like a teleporting system. What uh, I'm gonna walk into the room so I can see the rest of the chamber so I can map it first of all. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna stick it hit it with my spear. Mm -hmm. The the stone, the blue stone. Yep. Not like hit it like this, but you know, just kind of <laughs> poke at it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you poke at it. Uh, it is undisturbed. It continues its rotation. Is this like it's solid though? It is solid, and okay. your it uh, your spear scrapes against it, but leaves no mark. And I toss a ration on top of it, like sure. a piece of 
dried beef or dried fish or whatever. Okay. Uh, you toss a piece of ration onto it. It kind of bounces a little bit, although it recognized as though it recognized the weight, and the rotation slows slightly, but it continues to rotate. Did anyone bring their vinyl? <laughs> Actually, I, I have vinyls within our to reach. <laughs> right. Nice. Eric, I'm just going to to the bathroom for a second. I'll be back in just a moment. You docked points because that wasn't a Saxon record or something like that. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> I have no idea. So, I think I, think I, I want to touch to see if it's hot or warm or what. And you did say that it like does sink well, a little bit. So I think Taganus is going to like reach down and push on it with his hand a little bit. Okay. A mailed fist. You push on it. Um, it recognizes the the force. It kind of it'll sink a bit, and it slows further. You think you could stop its rotation if you so desired? Oh, like how far is it sinking at this point? Um, it's it was approximately an inch uh, elevated from the floor, and you're about probably halfway there uh, with the weight of your uh, of pressing down on it plus the weight of the uh, of the of the ration that's been thrown over the top of it. I'll take this little step on it, stand on it. All right. All right. It ceases in its rotation and Taganus is consumed in a bluish kind of flare and is disappears. So does the ration. Oh, so does the ration, and the disc goes back to spinning. Now, that either killed him or brought him somewhere safe. I will. Maybe dangerous. Because of. Uh, I, I will step on it next because if it did take him somewhere, then he is alone and he needs uh, yeah. a company. Alone, dark place. Okay. This might be our way out, man. It's not taking us to the flotilla, probably, but. Maybe. Maybe one of those other buildings. Okay. So, yep, you step onto it. Uh, you press down with your weight. The rotation stops. Same effect. A bluish flare. And uh, Ultar is gone. This is the right. best. This, this is his own uh, Tomb of Horror sphere of <laughs> annihilation right here. Anyone with right. the lazy season? I'll, I'll follow. Okay. Part of me does want to go check the north door and just leave the dungeon, but I, I am a good person and I'll, I'll follow everyone to their death. <laughs> you think the north door is leaving the dungeon? Yeah, I think so. Well, we're underground, so... Yeah, we're underwater. Yeah, yeah underground, oh. in the middle of a lake. Oh, okay. I didn't realize we were uh, under, underground. Yeah. Okay. Well, underwater... And yeah, underground, yeah. I guess. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if we're under. We'll we'll have floor level. Floating stone I'll, I'll, I'll join in with, with everyone. Uh, all right. We all stepped on it and have disappeared. Tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Taganus and Ultar stepped onto the Lazy Susan, and a uh, there was a blue flare, and they disappeared. On a sigh. And then we walk onto the lazy Susan with my wizard. Yep, exactly. Kind of. Well, pull in. We just leave all the henchmen there. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, do, if you want to tell the henchmen to come with you, um, it, they init You guys went first. Initially, I was going to say it's probably a morale check, but mm -hmm. thinking about it, they're watching you go. So, it's a three d six keep 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 good. So. To get them to come along, yeah, they'll, they'll just come along. That's uh, because where where are they gonna go? Uh, yeah, if they exactly. Go this yeah. is this is possibly their only ticket out of here. Yeah. So everybody goes into the lazy Susan. Yep. Yep. All right. So you find the characters, guys. Yep. It's just gonna be bottom right of this map. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh. Roll, uh, so Hobbs, you went up first. 
roll me a percentile die. Seventy. Okay. I was uh, the so what I was rolling for the recall when you had initially slipped into the toilet. Um, you had done so with some fishmen kind of coming into the space you were in, and you, they did not. Mm -hmm. You felt they did not see you. Those fishmen had seen your boat, and they had mm -hmm. yep. freed it and pushed it into the water. So that percentile was to see if the boat was anywhere near you when this happens. So the you, you immediately find yourself uh, transposed. Your stomach lurches a bit, and you find yourself... Okay. I will... Uh, I'm trying to load the next map. You find yourself in open air, um, 10 feet above the waterline. At which point the boat is not underneath you and you splash into the water. Uh oh. And. Okay, so. I'm looking up which uh, which one of these you come up over next to. Pretty sure. Yeah, it's that one. Okay, so the party, and uh, you guys are probably. Oh, and you guys see the. Uh, you guys surface right about here. So. First, Taganus is t f uh, appears in midair and falls in the water, and then Ultar, and then um, Louis, and then uh, our. Uh, I'm trying to remember everybody's character name and failing. <laughs> then Elias, and so on, as everyone walks through the teleporter. Uh, so you fall into the water, and you find yourself swimming. Do we have to ditch all our equipment to not drown? Or are we close enough we can kind of scramble to that rocky... So there? you may... you. So those of you who are not wearing armor... Um, let's see, did I put that on my DM sheet? I did, actually. So who among the party is wearing no armor at all? Me. I'm a wizard, no You're armor. You're the wizard. So roll a d20 and you need a two or better to survive. And this is where... Survive? Rolls oh my god. <laughs> a, 15. 15? a 15. 15? Good job. That is above a two, so Dio survives. Oh, All right. Who is, who is wearing light, light armor? I am in leather. Okay. Bodemel. Bodemel is in leather. And so... Aren't you carrying like a thousand coins or something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, at, I'm currently moving as uh, the medium tra armored, I think. Right. Maybe, whichever one's the medium one. All he right. asked for was armor. Just give him that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, then, and so, and so would be Lucky the Halfling. So, first off, uh, Louis, roll me a die 20. A2. You... Is it instant? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, is it instant death, or could you just like cut off your straps, or like he could just drop his backpack and let it sink, or... Yes, he could drop his backpack and let it sink um, for a reroll. So if you forego your inventory and lose the coins in the water, you may try again. Otherwise, you will drown. Oh, I guess that's the only choice, then. Maybe I can throw you a rope once I scramble to dry land. Can you like hold out for one round? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's going. Uh, he's going under. And the the problem is that. All right. Nope. He's going under. <laughs> nope. He he. Louis fails to loose his backpack, and sinks beneath the waves. Lungs filling with water. Rough. Oh man. Oh, shit. This right. is awesome. So next <laughs> up, fear of do you, uh, Dio, do you want to roll? Oh uh, yeah. The, uh, I'll roll for I'll roll for Lucky because I don't want to I don't want uh, to incur anybody's ire. 
Uh, if if uh, if he dies, then uh, nope. Uh, Lucky survives. Bodemel is wearing light armor. Hobbs, do you want to roll a d20? All right. Bodemel wearing light armor will succeed by a wide margin, so he does not have to dump his gear. And so he flound he can flounder over with Udo against the uh, the bank here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, lastly, we have our anybody in medium or that's not not last. Uh, next up is medium armor. Anybody wearing yep. chain or chain equivalent? Medium armor. Yep. You will need to doff your armor in order to swim, but you have a chance to do so. Roll a d20. You will succeed, but on. You will succeed. Oh. Uh, so, you mark off that you lose your chainmail, but you do. Um, but you do. You do survive. And he keeps his backpack. We'll delete that. Yep. Yep. He he retains his backpack. On fire. Yep. A very lucky roll. And last but not least, we have our heavy armor. Were you wearing? You were wearing plate, Hobbs. Yeah, buddy. All right. Roll me a d20. A four is insufficient. You may, uh, you may drop, drop your armor. You, well, and all my gear. Yeah, you you drop the you drop the gear in order to get loose because armor um, takes too long. Yeah, plate would take too long to get off. So, but you can drop right. your bag in order for a reroll. Yeah. Oh. oh. By official OD and D rules, you're supposed to die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but. Because you have buddies who are falling on top of you and ropes that are coming on top of you, we'll say that uh, we'll say that that's good enough. All right. So, um, oh, shit. So that could have been very bad, and uh, probably it should have been. Um, so between you, um, who was? What about the cleric? Oh yeah, that's true. The cleric, uh, uh, Jeff. Do you want to roll? It's not. A, a I'm just not happy unless somebody dies. <laughs> you want to roll a d20 for the cleric? Um, 14. He is wearing medium armor. He will have to doff it, and he may try again. Yeah, he'll do so. Oops. Oh, Louie, you didn't make it, did you? No. Oh, and shit. I don't think the cleric did either. Neither did the cleric. <laughs> he sinks beneath uh, the waves. <laughs> Referee. Yes. Just, you know, while everyone's making their checks and so on, like, I was obviously the, the first unarmored guy to get to the bank. I'm using the intervening time, sort of, I do have 50 feet of rope in my pack, mm -hmm. to basically grab my 50 feet of rope, like, while everyone's struggling and failing, toss my 50 feet of rope to uh, Jeff there. As he's I presumed you tossed it to Hobbs. That's why I'm letting Hobbs live. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Je Jeff, sorry, rolled Jeff. Rolled Jeff rolled really bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I sank like a freaking brick. Oh, damn. Yeah. Which is fun. Which is sad because Louis should have survived. He had the he had the lighter armor on, so he had a good. <laughs> but yeah, you rolled really. Yeah, like Louis. Yeah. Louis has a bad leg. He mm -hmm. can't, you know, kick and tread water. This is a pond, though. This isn't actually the sea, right? This, this is, is a, a lake. This is a lake, correct? Mm -hmm. And the cleric dies What's too, it? so the cleric drowns. At least I don't have to share my treasure with him. That's well, true. we're gonna go get Who's that treasure. Carrying the treasure. Did we lose any treasure? Believe, yeah, all yep. the stuff that Louie had. Yeah, and um, so what? Uh, so yeah, all the stuff that Louie had. Um, what were you carrying? Um, I had the figurines. Yep, and you you doffed that, but you get to keep your armor. I have um, one figurine. Yep. Yeah, figured I just had coinage. Yep, and Louis, Louis was carrying coins, and. Uh, you were carrying, uh, I think, eight hundred coins, uh, like literally eight hundred gold. Eight hundred gold, um, Ultar. Yeah, I had I had eight hundred eight hundred gold coins and one of the statues, three trinkets, copper do keys. We, do we see our boat anywhere? Yep, your boat is um, your boat is floating, uh, just around in the lake. Like, so far, are we officially? Yeah. Are we where our token? Yeah, yeah, we're up by the. Are there any entrances in this thing? Um, 
you let's see uh, you it is the structure of that particular turret it's about five feet or it's it's a few feet out of the water so it's difficult to um, it's difficult to uh, to see in um, you do a pull up um, and inside you see what appears to be a pagoda um, oops that is a uh, oops yes I didn't pick the right thing so yep with stairs leading down yep you see two things shit there's that a... is probably the northern stairwell and so yeah you see two things you see a it pagoda. totally is yep you see a pagoda covering the top of a stairwell leading down and you see a giant lizard uh, oh shit licking its own eyes it licks its own eye and uh stares at you Guys, maybe we should just send like a swimmer, like you know, someone ditch all their armor. He's like a strong swimmer. Grab the boat, and we can get out with it. What treasure we have remaining? Uh, sounds like you. <laughs> sounds like me. I'm bro, I'm yeah. strength five. I'm like an old bit of wrinkled shoe leather. I'm not a good swimmer. Paganus has a seven strength. Yeah, Dio. With all these cor with all this corpse lifting you've been doing lately, it's uh. uh it, you're, you're, five gonna and get, a half. you're gonna get five and a half, yeah. But yeah. Oh, you know what? I feel so complimented. Maybe I'll maybe I'll tie a rope around my waist and take a swim. Yeah. How big is this lizard? It is eight feet long. Ooh. I guess only one of us uh, has it noticed us, or? Oh, it sees you. It's it saw you. It looked up, and I rolled my reaction for a nine. So we think. Mm -hmm. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. Finish. I was, I was just going to say, go ahead. No, you, you finish first. Do we think this lizard is amphibious? You think you think it is, and that is confirmed by the fact that on a positive reaction, it looks at you for a minute, turns, and then slinks into the water. I want to jump on it and take a <laughs> ride. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Roll your lizard wrangling check. <laughs> so... Yeah. So anyway. Holy shit. Yeah, and these stairs go jump off in five as as well. Just like no, go jump off in like five minutes. Yep. Unfortunately, fortunately, if you were gonna if you were planning on grabbing the boat and uh, hightailing, I was gonna let you go and say we were a successful session. Yeah, Let's do yeah, that. Yeah. Sounds oh, yeah. good. Right. Wonderful. Yep. Yep. We're all like. Yes. Sounds good. Uh, a couple, a couple casualties there, but you have officially pulled the largest treasure haul that we have yet, uh, yeah, we have yet seen on these aisles. I need to make well a done, guys. slight edit to Louis's character sheet with the R.I.P. tag. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So what I've done, I have the map here. All right, I have this map. Good. And I'm guessing, I'm just guessing by what happened. I don't know if you can see through it to see. No, you can't see through, but I, I can transpose them over each other. And I'm guessing that seriously, that northern door was probably out. Maybe it was that giant lizard that, oh, shit, son of a biscuit, that did the killing. I don't know. Um, it wouldn't have necessarily been a good thing to go up that northern passageway because we would have opened it. And who knows, that lizard might have, you know, dealt with a few of us. You know what I mean? Yep. That's the price you pay. It is. All right. So are we all like 25th level? Is that what happened? Nope. Second, because you, you can only level once. But that's well, one XP from the third. Sorry. No, you go. <laughs> now, well, whether or not those stairs lead to the chamber you were looking at, we'll have to determine next time when we return to the, uh, well, well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, we'll determine where the players want to go. So will we return? Uh, we will fig we'll find out next time. On the Ash Coast. I. Ooh, there you guys. That was great. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Right. Can we do a quick?
quick mic check for me. Yes. Hello. Check. Yep. Perfect. Thank you very what much. What up, dog? <laughs> Beautiful. And that one's going in the end credits. <laughs>